we're still in lesson 3.1 about lines and angles, and this is 3.1b, so it's the second video. We're going to talk about angle pairs formed by a transversal. 3.1a can be found in the description in the geometry playlist link. If you haven't seen that, I don't want you to get confused. So your little yellow hand, that means if you should put this in your notes, it might be helpful. A transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines at two different points. So the transversal, that red line, intersects two coplanar lines, two lines on the same plane, at two different points. So we can see the big black dots where they intersect with the transversal, right? So line R and S, that's what we're going to call these. It could be any label, but in this example we're saying it's line R and line S, and we're going to call the transversal line T, okay? So line R and S are crossed by transversal T at two different points to make eight angles. You can see one through eight there. And lines that are like R and S don't have to be parallel, and we'll show you that in a second, okay? So corresponding angles lie on the same side of the transversal T on the same sides of line R and line S. So if you look, both Angle 1 and angle 5 are on the same left side of the transversal, and angle 1 is on the top of angle R, and angle 5 is on the top of angle S. So they're on the same sides of the transversal and the same sides of R and S. So we can see angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles. Can you see that 2 and 6 are corresponding angles? They're both on the right side of the transversal. They're both on the top of the lines. And angles 4 and angles 8 are corresponding angles. They're both on the right side of the transversal T, and they're both under lines R and line S. And angle 3 and angle 7, those are corresponding angles because they're both on the left side of the transversal T, and they're both underneath R and S. See that? The angles correspond to the same side of the transversal. Okay? So take a look at this card I have here. We've got lines A and B, and we've got a transversal C. Everything that is in between A and B is considered the interior. On both sides of that transversal, that's the interior, the blue. Everything on the outside of A and on the outside of B is considered the exterior. And that's going to help you when we talk about alternate, alternate interior angles. And there are non-adjacent angles, remember non-adjacent means they're not next to each other, that lie on opposite sides of transversal T inside lines R and S. So, if they're alternate, that means they're opposite and inside. So, they're on opposite sides of the transversal T, but you can see they're inside the R line and the S line. So angles 3 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles, and angles 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles. They're 4 and 5 are on opposite sides of the transversal, but they're inside R and S. See that? Alternate exterior angles lie on opposite sides of the transversal T outside lines R and line S. So they're on opposite sides of T. See that? 1 and 8 and they're outside of R and outside of S. See that? And angle 2 and angle 7 are on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're outside R and S. So those are alternate exterior angles. When we see alternate, we know the angles are on different sides of the transversal. So alternate exterior means opposite and outside, okay? Same side interior angles, or consecutive interior angles, they could be called that, lie on the same side of transversal T inside lines R and S. Same side interior. So we can see angles 3 and angle 5 are on the same side of the transversal, and they're on the interior, they're on the inside. We can also see angles 4 and angle 6 are on the same side of the transversal, and they're inside lines R. R and S. So same side interior means same side and inside. We can classify given pairs. Angle 2 and angle 4 are corresponding angles. We look at angle 2. 
and angle 4 in our diagram, they're on the same side of the transversal, and they're both to the right of the lines. See that? And corresponding angles is same side of the transversal on the same side of the lines, okay? So angles 2 and 4 would fit that definition. Let's look at angles 3 and angle 6. We've got angle 3 and angle 6 as alternate interior angles. They're both inside the lines on opposite sides of the red transversal. Angle 1 and angle 8, those are alternate exterior angles. They're on opposite sides of the red transversal, and they're outside of the lines. And angle 2 and angle 3, those are same side interior angles. They're on the same side of the red transversal, but they're inside the two black lines. And take a look at this diagram. Believe it or not, there's some lines and transversals here, and the transversal can move around. So we can identify the transversal and classify each angle pair. So we have line L, and we have line A and B. So to figure out which is the transversal for a given angle pair, you locate the vertices of the angles and the line they share. That line they share is going to be the transversal. So if you look at angle 1 and angle 5 in our diagram, we can see where their vertices are, can't we? We can see angles 1 vertex is here and angle 5's vertex here, and they share line B. That means B is the transversal, and they're on opposite sides of B, aren't they? So they're alternate angles, and they are both inside the two black lines. This is inside the line, and that's inside the line. So they're alternate interior angles. In this one, we have angle 3 and angle 6. Angle 3 and angle 6. We look at where their vertices are. This is the vertex for 3. This is the vertex for 6. We look at the line. They both share. Both vertices share. That means line A is the transversal. And because they're on the same side of the red transversal line, and they're both beneath the lines, this is beneath line L and this is beneath line B, they're corresponding angles. When we look at angle 1 and angle 4, the vertex for 1 is here and the vertex for 4 is here, so they share line L as the transversal. And they're on opposite sides of the transversal, aren't they? And this one is outside line B and this one is outside line A, so they're alternate exterior angles. Now, when we're confused, we can try turning the diagram until you can identify the parts. So if you're used to seeing the, tri the, the transversal going vertical, like up and down like this, even if it's on a little bit of a slant, and then you see something like this, just turn the drawing. Just turn the drawing so that you can see what's going on, and that might help you, okay? You can turn your book or your paper or your homework or whatever, all right? So... As we did in the last one, we found that line L is the transversal. If we took this drawing and just turned it sideways 90 degrees this way, we can see that L connects the vertices for angle 1 and angle 4, and they share that line L. So that's the transversal. And they're on opposite sides of L, and they're on the outsides of A and B, so they're alternate exterior angles. Okay. Our next lesson is still going to be in the lines and angles lesson. It's going to be systems of equations and eliminations 3.1c. So it's going to be a little review of what we did in Algebra 1, and it might be really helpful just to watch it real quick. If you're really good at elimination method, maybe you can just watch it without taking notes. If you have trouble remembering how to do elimination method, then you can take notes. All right. I'll see you there. Bye.